Hey everyone, thanks for tuning back into the channel here. Joey here. Uh, today we're going over today's trade recap. Um, I'm happy that I ended the week green here. So we're going to talk about the trades, what I traded and how well I did, as well as talk about a strategy that's very important. So um, it's kind of about how there are two strategies and you can, should kind of pick a direction and not kind of dabble in both. And I wanna show a perfect example of what happened to me today. So stay tuned here as we take a recap and how to avoid this strategy so that you don't fall victim to it like I did and improve your skill. So here we go, let's dive into it. Today is March 12th, Friday, and let's take a look at my progress for today. So today I'm up $667. Uh, which is decent and it's kind of a medium day for me if you will uh, green is always good of course and that's good but honestly I got myself into some trouble today and uh, I could have made a lot more money if I would have I think possibly avoided a, a mistake here so let's talk about it first off let's talk about what I traded then we'll go into those trades first off uh, I trade well here's what I traded NL, NLSP, ENTX, and SEEL. And that was the three that I traded today. Um, make sure to go back and look at my previous video because it, I did talk about the Webull platform and uh, I specifically talked about how to find stocks that I trade. And it's in direct correlation to uh, the Webull platform. They have a top gainer section on there. And I like to use that to start watching some of the top gainers in the market. And those are typically the stocks I trade. So anyways, back to this, let's talk about the first trade with NLPSP, NLSP here. So most of you guys know, I don't typically, sometimes I wait to trade first thing when the market opens. And there's a reason because of that. I use E-Trade here and to be honest, I don't think it's the best platform. I'm just kind kind of looking around at this point. I've been with them for a long time. That's why I'm staying with them as for now. I've got all my money with them and I'm kind of looking to eventually make a move possibly. I do like their fee structure though. It's zero, you know, zero dollar commission on all my trades, which is incredible. Now, the reason I don't trade sometimes right as the bell opens, the market opens, is because I feel like the E-Trade platform gets a little bit laggy first thing in the morning because the market opens up, you have all this trading that happens immediately, volatility goes crazy, and sometimes it's really hard to get a fill uh, when you put in an order to buy, and sometimes it's even difficult uh, when you put an order to sell to get filled on that as well. Um, so I... I typically avoid it. However, today everything seemed to be running fairly smooth. So I did, um, I did take a couple trades on NLSP, and that they were good. They were good trades right out of the gate. This thing, as you can see here, it uh, opened up really quickly. And normally I, I sit on the sidelines and watch the, for the first thirty minutes just to see how stocks move. A lot of times they'll they'll rip up and crash right back down and this one had that tendency as you can see here you know went up to 715 and it went back and forth for a while hit that resistance fell and just kind of went sideways up and down up and down and then it tried to retest at 733 and failed again so i'm glad i got my trades in and thank god they filled but it was a tad bit laggy so um you know i left this one alone after this 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 uh Big red candlestick here. And that one kind of faded all day. So uh, I kind of kicked it to the side after that. So next up was ENTX. So ENTX. Here we go. This one had a great, great push. So uh, yeah, on this one, look at this. This is pretty incredible. This thing really took off. And my problem is that I don't necessarily like 
trading stocks that halt um, real frequently. As you can see with this one, this thing, it was trading sideways all pre-market. It opened up in the market hours, ripped up and ran to a halt. So it's like, okay, cool. That's definitely one to watch. And as it opened up, it ripped so quickly, so fast, that it went right into another halt. So with that, once again, I was sitting on the side lines. I was like, that was a little too quick. You know, there was no place for an entry on that one. And the see, so the problem with this is that trying to get in is hard. And then once you're in, you're in for a ride. And that could mean huge gains or huge losses. And because of it, I consider these pretty risky. Um, I do trade them, but I used to trade them a whole bunch in the past. And I just got burned so many times because what would happen is I'd, I'd get in somewhere and be happy I got filled, let's say, you know, in here. And it goes into a halt. And what happens is on that next halt, it just flushes and goes the opposite way. And I lose a ton of money. So uh, these are harder to trade. So what I did was I decided to wait on this thing till it hit a peak. Till we saw that it was going to go all the way up. And finally, at some point, it was going to pull down, right? And I was waiting for that, the big step down. And so that's what I did is I... Uh, been doing this a lot lately and I'm enjoying this enjoying this strategy is really buying on the pullbacks and kind of waiting for the next move higher. Now I'm going to I'm going to show you later how this really destroyed me later on and that you should avoid this strategy and it's it's kind of a split on two paths. So let's finish up with this recap on ENTX first. So anyways, e, um got into this one and I got a few a uh, few trades on it. Uh, which were pretty good. And I lucked out because I was able to avoid that halt, which was good. But this this whole thing on the backside just, you know, was was fading a whole bunch. So not really interesting after that. But I did get a few great, um, really good trades on it. So let's talk about where my big slip up happened. Okay. Uh, it was right in, let's see. Yeah, okay, so... I was doing great all day, working my progress, got all the way up to 773 bucks, okay? And then from there, I have had a horrible, horrible trade on SEEL, and I lost $300 right off the top of that, so um, almost half my, my, uh, my gain for the day in one trade, I lost it, so... This is, this is what I want to show you what to avoid on strategies, okay? So two paths. You're either, you know, a day trader or swing trader. Swing trading, we know it's trades that you make. You're um, holding for a couple days and maybe one day, maybe a week, maybe even a month. And the whole goal is to get in at a good price and, you know, Still a few days later um, up the road. And what is difficult here is when you're a day trader, based on my strategy that I use, I do a lot of scalp trading. So let's look at SEAL real quick. I'll show you an example. So on this one, this thing was really just having this nice curl up, this continuous curl up. And it did have a few little tiny little you know, pullbacks here throughout its journey, but it was going straight up the hill. And I thought this thing was pretty impressive. Uh, but lately with my strategy is I used to get in a lot of times. I would buy and wait for the next move higher and ride momentum. And lately I've kind of tweaked my strategy just a bit. And I've been looking for actually stocks that move like this. They move up big. And then I wait, what I wait for is a huge drop where I can buy in real quick. Some, sometimes on the backside of these moves, stocks drop so quickly, so fast. And what I've been realizing, if I can buy at the bottom of those and buy in big, buy in quickly, right as it flushes, we get these nice little pop-ups right behind it where I can sell for a nice profit. And I've been doing pretty well with it. Now here's my problem with SEAL. This is where I really screwed up. Is 
I took that strategy and um, amplified it big time. So what I was doing is I let this thing go all the way up to the top here at uh, 595 in its top, and then I waited for kind of the next drop. And so I saw this drop in here and decided to hop in. And actually, that uh, let me verify this. It was either that I got in here or I got in here. I think it was actually here on 525. Let me see here. Uh, yeah, actually, um, yeah, throughout this move, what happened was I saw it drop, I'd buy in, and we'd get just a tiny pop-up, and I didn't sell. I decided, let me wait for an even bigger move on the curl. And what happened is it, it dropped again. And as it dropped, I'm thinking, okay, well, this is a chance for me to average in, um, get another chunk so I can create a lower average cost for myself. And then that way I can, you know, sell and either A, break even on the next curl up or get a nice little profit in there. And what happened was it fell again, fell again. And my problem was I kept adding into this. Now, here's where the, the where I get crossed up in my strategies and I think you should avoid doing this, especially if you're a beginner. If you know what you're doing, that's fine. Um, but once again, there's two paths, either a swing trader or a day trader. And with a day trader, like I've been doing, I've been, I was sticking to my um, rules, scalp trading and making nice profits, you know, all the way up. And the problem was now I was diving into this, bat, which was already a bad move, bad position. I should have just sold quickly for a, for a little loss. My problem was I was, my ego was in it. Um, I was just super arrogant about it and way too cocky. And what happened was I just kept adding in as this thing, I was waiting for the next curl up and we, we never got it. And as it would push down, I was just thinking, well, let me just buy in more of this. And this is kind of a noob mistake, honestly. This is something that I should be well past this kind of... Um, trading because what happens this is this is the train of thought here and let me know if you agree with this if you've been in this position before i know a lot of you have so make sure to leave a comment below on this but you keep averaging in right then you you build this such a big position and i was in such a huge position now i typically risk anywhere from like you know three to eight thousand dollars in a given trade okay and here i am as this thing continuously falls and i'm just adding in i built up a, a twenty thousand dollar position which is way too much to risk in one in one trade and here i am holding this nasty big position i'm just seeing this thing drop and drop and drop and i'm thinking as, as i'm watching this thing drop i'm thinking to myself there's got to be a turnaround but now what's happened is I told myself I can't keep averaging in. I'm, I'm basically, you know, out of cash at this point. I can't even buy in anymore, even if, even if I wanted to at a lower price, which is, you know, a disgrace. And this thing just continues on. You know, it hit VWAP for a second, had a little bit of support. But what happened was my average price I built in was uh, 508 okay? So I was looking to try to get there to break even and just get rid of this position. And I held and held and held and kept just kept dropping and dropping and dropping. Okay. Now, let me tell you about the emotions that go in this. Now I'm feeling held hostage to this trade. I'm sitting in it with a massive position. I can't go off and trade on other stocks because I'm so fully loaded on this thing that I'm, you know, I've got all my, my buying power in it. So I'm locked in and now I'm held hostage, which is a feeling you never want to have when you're a day trader. And you know, you've done this, this is a bad mistake. And I, I've just been doing this, I, I think too much lately, trying to improve on it. Um, and I think it's partly to do with my my tweaking of my strategy lately of, of buying pullbacks because 
if I don't get out, I, I end up sometimes averaging down. I haven't done this always, but sometimes I, I get into these bad positions and I did it on eyes before um, on other stocks. So once again, I, I'm all the way down here, guys. And at this point, I'm down on my profit loss. I'm down about at the bottom of this move, which was 446. I was down about $3,000. And here I am, held hostage, hoping and hoping that the thing will curl up and then I can sell. And guess what? They, oh, they don't always curl up. This one, I lucked out. Once again, I've had a lucky week, and that's not a good way to trade. A good trader doesn't trade on luck or hope. They have a plan. And with this one, this one just got away from me, honestly. And it will happen. Um... But I decided to, to be stubborn with this one and, and hold out and just wait till we got maybe even close to 508. And um, guys, look at this. I, this is how arrogant and cocky I was on this and stubborn, which you should not be. It went all the way up to five. I finally got that chance to sell up at five and I decided, no, nope, let me keep holding. I think it's... Maybe has a chance of breaking that, which was stupid because there is plenty of resistance here previously on this chart, you know, at five dollars at five oh four. And it dropped down a bit, and I thought if it has a chance to curl, I might be in the um in the green here. So I waited and waited and waited. We finally got a curl up. Uh we got to we actually got to a high of five oh or five ten. And I actually sold right before that because I was worried about this. Ended up selling at 504. So I got out scot free for the most part, as big as my position was. Now, guess what? I still did lose. I lost 300 bucks on, on that entire trade. And had I held for another second longer, you know, I could have broke even. But I was lucky to get out with a $300 loss, to be honest. From being down to, you know, 3000 here. Um, I really lucked out. I did get out. So that really helped me out. Um, but anyways, the point I want to make on this is that don't get into this habit, this strategy of averaging down and averaging down when things are going against you, because there's a lot of times they don't curl back and they don't give you that opportunity to sell at a loss or, or a, sorry, a break even or profit. It's, you know, uh, not always the case. And if you're holding, you know, if I was to hold this and it would continue just going to the floor, I'd be in big trouble. Big, big trouble. So, once again, I lucked out. Don't do what I did and make this mistake of averaging down. Now, guess what? If you're a swing trader and you're building in a position, this might have been fine. You know, because you might have been planning to sell tomorrow, the next week, uh, a month from now. That might be part of your strategy, but if you're a day trader, this is just this is bad news. Don't don't be averaging into to things like this. Because this was obviously showing, you know, some strength at first, but all that way up in that move. And you can see it almost did the exact opposite, which should have been known. You know, it built up all this all this great uh these moves up, and what goes up must come down at some point, and it did. A, if you look at the chart here, just a nice V. And I think that was to be expected, kind of. And I just made the stupid mistake of getting in way too heavy. So don't make that mistake. And let me show you how it, you know, affected me today. So I was up 700 at this point. And because of that trade, I dropped down 300. And had I avoided that one trade, you know, I'd be up an extra uh, 300 bucks today. So. Um, I think, you know, possibly over a thousand, but I'm in the day at 667 and I was able to, let's go over my last, uh, stock that I traded today. You know what came into play, which was crazy eyes, eyes came back into the scene. Um, go back and look at my last video, not my last video, but, um, there's one titled, uh, bag holder and I made a huge mistake on eyes and this one previously let's look at the year chart real quick so i can show you yeah on this one 
This one went nuts previously on, what was it, 3-9, March the 9th. And it went up massively. And I got in for um, position, and I did the same stupid thing of averaging down. And I was in a massive, massive size. And I ended up closing the day and not even selling that position. And I lucked out and was able to um, get out of it the next day. And so once again, now I'm crossing paths. So as a day trader, I believe I shouldn't be bag holding. I shouldn't be holding on this on to any stocks. Stick to my strategy. I'm scalp trading and I make good money that way. But the second I do this stupid thing of averaging into a bad position, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And now all my buying, buying power is in it. I'm locked in. I'm held hostage. And I'm hoping that I can get out at some point. And now I've become... Uh, a nasty weird swing trader so it's crossing paths and i i don't think you should do that that's just my opinion you can do whatever you want whatever is working for you um but that's just my advice here so anyways today eyes came back this uh towards the end of the day i saw this on the radar here um it just had this incredible push at the end of the day and i was thinking wow eyes is a crazy stock it's volatile and it pushes hard so let me hop in for a few trades and I did um, I was able to hop in here and scalp trade this thing um, a bit on some of these pullbacks which was nice because I went from 400 all the way up to 667 so you know an extra 200 bucks on that that was good and that's where I'm ending the day today so I hope this was helpful for you guys I hope you are really um, Especially for you beginners out there are taking you know notes on this um, in regards to trading and really trying to stick to a, a specific strategy and really hone your skills on that there's going to be times we do stupid things it's just how it works it's part of being a trader uh, but the best thing is to be able to learn from those mistakes and if they're not big enough you know you can um, not blow up your account so that's ideal uh but anyways let's look at look at the calendar before we wrap up here i've had a really great month here all green very proud of myself in that sense now honestly my numbers could be a little bit bigger i've had some you know on a few days some sloppy trading and uh, numbers could be a whole lot bigger than this to be honest uh, but i did what i can and this is where i'm sitting so solid green on 10, 10 straight days, which is great, and um, setting up 11K on the month so far. So I want to improve that, and I want to try to uh, definitely get up to um, try to break 20K. I'd like to do 30K, but you just don't know how the market goes. We could have a complete slowdown, and maybe 11, you know, 12K is the best thing to even shoot for because. I know I have a tendency of getting into big, nasty red days, like in February. They will happen, um, but it's a matter of if I can keep those small. That's kind of the goal there. And, um, you know, I got to be honest, like, I look at these numbers sometimes, and this has been the true experience for me. Just like in January, I'm like, when I finished January, I was so proud of myself, up 11K, and I'm just like, oh my god, this is incredible. I've never been able to make this much money before. Things are great, and guess what? They're going to continue. That's my mentality, because I was doing so well. And the truth is, that is not the case. So even though I made 11K, guys, look at this. I destroyed my February. I wiped out that 11K completely, and then some. I went down 12K in February. So don't look at this number. You've really got to look at your own numbers um, to compare yourself and improve on what you're doing wrong here. And for me, making 11K was great. And I got too happy with that. And I got to thinking I'm unstoppable and things are gonna continue like this. And they didn't. And I made some really bad mistakes. And because of it, I went down 12K. So look at this entire progress for January and February. All the trading that happened for me in January, February are it's completely basically back down to zero, actually, you know, negative a thousand, whatever. 
But that's like, you know, that's all my progress gone for two months. That's like, can you imagine working, you know, somewhere and for two entire months not getting paid? And that's exactly what this looks like. So I just want to be honest with you guys and show you, hey, you know, people looking at me and going, oh, dude, 11K, that's great. That's incredible. Um, truth is, that's not, it's what you end up with in the year. And so far, not off to a good, great start, to be honest. I thought I was doing great. And then February hit and not so good. So now I'm looking at March and going, wow, I'm up 11K. That's great. At the same time, I know what can happen and I can destroy that very quickly. And uh, if I play my cards right and I'm disciplined, I don't think I can, I think I can avoid the problems of having big drawdowns. Um, so while 11K sounds great, you know, I could end this month with 3,000 or 500 bucks. Or more, you, you don't know. So take your numbers lightly in the sense that you always got to build your cushions. Um, I don't think I'm going to, I'm realistically going to be happy with my trading until I reach, you know, 30K sometime soon to have that cushion to get me through the bad months, to get me bad, through the bad days, the bad weeks, because they're going to happen. And I'm going to need some cushion. If I want to make big numbers, I've got to be wary of the the big red ones. So um, just a word of caution there. I, and I'm just, you know, showing my own. You might be a lot of, uh, uh, you know, much better than me as far as your discipline goes. But, you know, this also comes with the territory of small cop trading, um, day trading in general. Uh, thing, things are crazy. They're volatile, and you're not you're not going to consistently make money every single day. That's just not how it works. So you've got to build up your your mound of cash, and then you got to start protecting that and keep adding on to it as you can, and don't let it deplete itself. So that's it. Anyways, I'll stop rambling for you guys. I hope you guys have an awesome Friday. Happy Friday to you. Let me know if you're green, if you're red how much and how your progress is going. So take care. See you on the next one.